All right, I'm welcome back for the episode of Carnivore Trade. Today is Thursday, June 22nd, 2023. If you're not done so already, please give the video a thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts and analysis. Anyways, let's get into it today. So markets here, um, again, a little bit on the mixed side. So just like yesterday, kind of a mixed bag. Uh, Spider is actually green today. So, you know, essentially kind of reversing some of the losses from yesterday. You can see we're, well, we're not quite um, to Tuesday's uh, close, but we're, you know, about a dollar or so away there on the spiders. Um, but mostly a flat day here across the board. Dow is down five basis points. The Qs, again, it's back to the QQQ show. Um, as the triple Qs are up 1% here, Apple leading the charge up 1.4, Amazon, also having a big day here, up 3.83%. Nice pop there for AMZN. Maybe coming into a little bit of resistance here, but you have a nice consolidation, so this can uh, pop up a little bit. Um, and you can, you're gonna, you got that weekly uh, red bar up there at 136.50, 200 MA on the weekly as well. So coming into some resistance here, but nice little consolidation pattern there on Amazon. For a pop, Microsoft up 1.5, Google up 1.5 as well. So again, big tech show. Um, really the big laggard is uh, AMD here down one and three quarters. We talked about that level yesterday. Um, that 110 area, 109 should get hit. There's the gap fill at 108 as well. So that's kind of on the weaker side. Um, NVIDIA and Tesla taking a little bit of a break here. You see NVIDIA rolling over a little bit, down a half a percent. There was some insider selling up to the tune of $51 million, uh, I think one of them was. Um, so they're, they're cashing in on this here. Um, and I did see a few more insider sells on that after that big, big run. I heard chatter about Broadcom as well. Um, but in any case, Tesla, um, that is managing to come back to the green side. We'll see how it reacts at 265 tomorrow. But we had that pretty good engulfing reversal yesterday. And this is very stretched here. So this does need to do some backing and filling. Maybe even go test 340 or uh, retest 240 or possibly even that gap there. Um, but Tesla still holding up. And again, it's back to the QQQ show. Russell 2000 down, right? <laughs> back to the back to the old standard there. Dow down, right? Um, XLF, you know, financials down about 1%. KRE down 3%. That's going to close below this green bar low. So that's a big negative uh, for the KRE here. You're going to see the same thing on the KBE and uh, XBD as well. So again, same kind of story. Fin financials down. Um, healthcare, that's actually green here. Let's take a look at Matt's. XLB down and uh, industrials down as well. Uh, transports here are green. So um, FedEx getting a nice bounce. We talked about that yesterday. That did manage to recoup those losses. But again, it's really the QQQ show. Right now, um, there's nothing really to add. Um, so again, we just, all we're going to do here right now is we're looking at this SPX low from Thursday. We get below it today and we close above it. So right now, you have to give the bulls kind of an upside bias. Um, until you break below that, you break below that green bar on a closing basis, um, then it probably takes you down to that 4,300 handle. There may be a few pit stops on the way. There is still an hourly, so it's you know it's not the most dominant. It's an hourly time frame, but you still have an hourly head and shoulder there. There's your left shoulder ahead, right shoulder, and that's still in play. I mean, there's nothing. This hasn't been negated. That can take you down to 4,280. Um, and again, where is that? Well, it's right into this little this chop zone. And again, you know, 4,300, I just mentioned. But it's right into that little chop zone. So that could be um, an area to watch if that plays out. That gets negated with uh, a break above 4,400. So pretty simple here. Um, again, no, no point in overcomplicating it. As long as we're above this area, though, on a daily close, I got to give the dominant pattern, which is the daily, not the hourly, which is sort of the head and shoulder pattern is on. But the daily, the more dominant, will give the bulls kind of the uh, the benefit of the doubt here. By the way, the VIX, um, man, down into the 12 handle here, 12.88, continuing to fall. It actually gapped up this morning um, and got above yesterday's high. But they have actually completely killed this as an indicator with zero DTE. So, um, you know, now it is getting to an extreme here. I think we're going back to... I think you got to go back to, yeah, really pre-pandemic. You know, we're all the way down here into that 12 handle. So you got to go back to January 2020, the last time uh, VIX was this beaten down here. But um, either way, let's get over here to the Qs. Um, so again, up just about 1%, recouping most of yesterday's losses. Not all of it. We still have to fill that gap at 366.90. Um, and again, same kind of deal. I'm going to use the NDX because it doesn't have that dividend in the way. But we go to the hourly, you got the same kind of pattern there that the SPX has with that kind of 
slight head and shoulder look and then we broke below it but you know nice little recovery here today and again um, as long as we're above as long as we're above um, this probably I would say 14.8 area sorry uh, 14.8 area those are two pivot lows that's going to be your kind of big line in the sand we did close below uh, Thursday's low yesterday on the NDX so a little bit of weakness um, but again recovering here today again just going to keep it simple um, and go with that green bar low from uh, last Thursday. Anyways, let's get over here to the Russell, uh, which we already mentioned, but again, 20 MA test, and it's getting a little bit of a bounce off that. That still has the upside bias to 192. I do want to point out, though, as we get close to the end of the month, um, we've got one week left, in fact. Um, for right now, you do have a monthly 20 MA rejection. So if we're down in this area here, that'll be an interesting look to go into the end of the month. If you get above that, then it's a little bit more of a different story but we'll see what we get as we get into the end of june and end of quarter there down nothing has really changed uh, so the dia again down just 10 basis points today resistance still remains 343 345 and then if you get above that it's 348. all right semiconductors here um right at the flat line here although they were under some pressure here earlier today we gapped down and then just kind of went sideways didn't really participate in the in the rest of the rally again nvidia amd dragging the smh down today as they are under a little bit of pressure here, but still holding trend. So nothing really too crazy to worry about there on IGV gapping down. Back to the green side here again. We'll see how this reacts with that 20 moving average kind of upsloping to price. But um, again, going into a lot of re weekly resistance. So it does need to back off a little bit. So anyways, transports here. Uh, DJT up 32 basis points. Nothing wrong here. So still inside of that green bar. Again, from last Thursday, as long as you're above that, this has the upside bias to 15,200, no problems. Currently, again, we mentioned FedEx, um, that did recoup all of those losses, so that helped out the DJT. Um, over here to interest rates, so again, bond yields continuing to climb. There's the two-year note that is taking a hit here on the futures, and um, two-year yield back to 4.8. So this is, you know, I've been saying this for a while. Um, we're going back to 5% here, and that looks to be that setup, up move, little little curl. And now we're just kind of flagging here. You got a little bit of a micro pop. Um, so this looks like it's headed to 5%. Five-year, uh, heading up to 4.3. Nice consolidation pattern there. 10-year, you got to break above 3.85, then it can go to 4. Um, then the 30-year, you got to get above 4, you can go to 4.2. So again, yields still holding up here. Um, markets don't care right now. Yield curves are, are extremely inverted. Markets don't care right now either. Um, but that is the nature of the environment we are in. My guess is right now, if you get above 5%, that's the level where the market starts to care um, because that's where the Fed funds rate is, right? So Fed 5 to 525, the two year starts ripping above 5%. Now it's going to poke a hole in the narrative that the Fed can just cut rates whenever they want. Um, this whole rally has been predicated on the Fed cutting rates way sooner than the Fed is saying they're going to cut rates, right? The market's saying, oh, the Fed's going to cut rates this year, um, and the Fed is saying they're not, and they're going to be higher for longer, essentially. So just remember that dynamic there. Anyways, let's get over to housing XHB, down 67 basis points, nothing terrible. That can still get to 78. ITB can still get to 83. No changes there. VNQ, you know, I had some real high hopes for VNQ, right? So down 1.25%, uh, obviously being sarcastic here. Um, but uh, we did close below. We're going to close below this uh, this uh, little green bar, inside bar pattern from the 7th. So breakdown there, right? Um, and again, we weren't really, we didn't really have our fingers crossed on this one. Uh, so definitely a sign of weakness there. You know, on the weekly, um, you know, could they save it? You still have this, you know, you still have an inside bar here, right? There's your green bar and you're inside of that. Um, but again, I say it every time you're below all these moving averages. That does indicate there's a higher percentage of failure. And you can make a case that even though you're inside of this big green bar, you're you know, more so in kind of a bear flag kind of pattern here uh, with that big red bar. So weakness there in VNQ and nothing else is really new regarding that. Uh, XLF we talked about again, down 1% on the day. Stalling out at the 20-day moving average. Again, still has a weekly pattern bear look. Uh, KRE regionals, um, again, got to hold 40. Um, so that's going to be, a, a, you know, an area for that to hold. You got the little gap there. At 39.76, you get through that. Um, you know, you probably hit it back to 38. So, again, regionals 
we talked about this. I said there's a lot of resistance at 45 to 46. Um, you know, we kind of got up there for a day, tried to tried to flag, and then we failed. So again, regional still not out of the woods right now. And these guys can't. These guys' hands are tied. They can't do equity share dilution. They want to, uh, but they can't. They're all still down 50 percent from the highs or more. And um, if they announce a share dilution, uh, shareholders are not going to be happy. Uh, but either way, there's a KBE that is below this respective green bar, and now back below all four major moving averages. So again, regionals, big banks still on the weaker side. Broker dealers below Thursday's low. That will probably want to go test that 20 and 200. So we'll call it four, just say 460, Pierce of 460. Uh, it's going to be the next level there for the XBD. All right, crude got a whack today. A little bit of a hammer there uh, engulfing reversal down four and a half below all the moving averages again you guys know my thoughts on this we're heading you know back down to the lows we break that um then we're headed down into the 50s uh xle outside move down again weakness there don't touch it right now leave it alone xop same thing leave this one alone we'll get a chance to buy these lower later in the year oih um again the best out of the bunch still trying to hold yesterday's range here um Again, still needs to get above 280 on a weekly close, but um, pretty good little hammer there on volume. So um, oil sector coming under pressure here. Nat gas holding up well, though. Um, that is fractionally higher here. Inventories came out. We'll take a look at the intraday here. Another bear rate attempt and then right back to the highs. So net gas holding up well, putting in a little bit of a base here, a flag. That's setting up. You get through that. That's where the squeeze level is on that gas um, then dollar index here just an inside bar pattern it did come off the lows here it was due for a little bit of a bounce but um you just gotta really gotta get back above 103 before you can get anything going here um, and it is still under pressure so still maintaining a bear bias here on the dxy in the meantime and again lots of distortions out there right so gold um you know the dollar has not really gotten a bit and neither is gold right now um, so gold breaking this area my guess is they're not going to save that 20-week moving average, um, which I've kind of hinted at for the last several weeks. Um, it's a matter of time. So 1,900, um, but I think you can get through that at this point. You've put in a nice base. So I don't think 1,900 is the level. I would look down closer to that 200 MA, 1850 for right now on gold futures. Silver did have a little bit of support here at the uh, 200. Um, should still test 22 and then 21. We'll reevaluate it there. Um, we'll see what we get here so silver backing off we knew it had to do some backing and filling up here again don't buy into the hype just trust the charts what are you doing you're going into a lot of resistance generally you're going to get a pullback off that um, so silver here into the 200 ma that may get a bounce there uh, platinum down two and a half so big move down on platinum there that's into some support around 920 We'll see if it can get a bounce there. Maybe you guys test double bottom, um, but platinum, just avoiding it for right now. It's not showing strength, right? We look for pattern here. Uh, it didn't give us pattern. We look for pattern here. It didn't give us pattern. So it's showing weakness. Just avoid it for right now. And we'll see if it can shape up. Palladium also breaking down as well. Same story. So I've been looking to get into this, uh, but it hasn't given us pattern here. So it's still telling us it's weak. Let it go lower and um, we'll reevaluate it when it gets down all right uh copper here nice reversal so it tried to break out here got all the way up to 396.7 through the 100 ma and then right back down it's still not broken if you go sideways it can still push up to four um you start to take out these pivots here you know you get below that 200 ma then you're probably headed back down to 375 370 and ultimately you guys know i'm expecting a move to 340 all right lastly over to bitcoin here um, Bitcoin's still hanging around in that 30,100 area, 30,175 right now. You basically went into double top, so going to stall out. If this flags, we'll look to 32 to 32.5. It's that simple. Um, that's the big resistance level for Bitcoin, but you did have a nice consolidation pullback pattern. Um, so again, instead of 32, we'll look to about 32.5. So we'll give it the upside bias there, uh, assuming it can flag and push up. So no problems there with Bitcoin at the moment. All right, lastly, back over to... SPX again. Um, it's getting a little bit of a fade here. Nothing crazy. So a little bit back backed off of the highs. Um, there is a pretty good gamma level that I think we're into. 4370, 4380, that area. It's really simple though. You close below this, that opens the door for more downside. Um, until that happens, we give the market the upside bias. If by some chance you get a high volume sell-off. Uh, and, and the spiders, look at the volume today, by the way. 335 p.m. and we're at 50 million. That is nothing. 
But if you get, you know, a big surge in volume and we sell off, then we've probably put in some type of a top. So just be aware of that moving forward. Anyways, guys, we can wrap up here. You guys take care. Come find me on ConvertTrades.com. We'll talk to you guys all tomorrow.